Good evening, welcome to our Wednesday night service, San Francisco Serrano, and this is Valley Baptist Church. We're going to start our service by singing number 81, if you can stand with us. When we see Christ, number 81. Number 81, all together in the first, here we go. All times the day seems long, our cry is hard to bear. We're tempted to complain, to murmur and despair, but Christ will soon appear to catch his bride away. Okay, remain 
right standing and turn to number 22. Number 22. Are you washed in the blood? Number 22. 22 on the first verse. Here we go. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood and the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? When the bridegroom cometh, will your robes be white? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Will your soul be ready for the mansions bright and be washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Lay aside the garments that are stained with sin, and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Thank you. You may be seated. Let's open up our Bibles to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter number 11. Hebrews chapter number 11. Hebrews chapter number 11, and we're going to read verse number 30, 31. Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 31. The Bible says, By faith the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not, when she had received the spies with peace. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, uh, for... Uh, this evening, Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for our visitors. We pray, Father God, for uh, Art, Lord God, that you continue to cover him, Lord. And I pray, Father God, that he may be able to go home soon. We also want to pray for the focusers, Lord, who are sick. We pray for them, Lord God, that you also give them a speedy recovery. Thank you for the faithful who are here, Lord. Bless the message tonight, Lord. Holy Spirit of God, we need you to guide and lead direct. You speak to hearts, and I pray for those that will watch this video later on, that you will also speak to their hearts. Lord God, I pray, Heavenly Father, that we would see clearly, Lord God, that uh, faith is what is needed, Lord God, to be able to be in the family of God. All you need is faith, Lord. Father God, help us and guide us. We ask it in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Notice uh, here that in uh, Hebrews 11, 30, 31, by faith, the harlot Rahab, okay? And uh, I want you to notice that, that um, it says by faith, the harlot Rahab. Now when you 
after you've seen the the other heroes of the faith, like Abel and and uh, Noah and Enoch and Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, then then you have this uh, lady right here, and she is described as a harlot. That's that's how the Bible describes her, and it's for a reason uh, that she's described like that. Because she uh, she has been living a life of prostitution, and you have to understand that uh, in in in, uh, in Canaan, in Canaan, a lot of the uh, idols that they worship involve uh, prostitution. So she was involved in that, and we don't know if she was one of the uh, prostitutes that that went to a specific idol, but she, this was also her the way she made a living. By by uh, the uh, use of her body this way, which is uh, contrary to God's word, but it also shows you uh, that God's mercy extends very very far. It doesn't matter who the person is. It doesn't matter what the person has done. The the mercy of God is able to save to the uttermost. Okay, so uh, no one is ever too far gone that they can't be saved. Because look at the example that we're going to see tonight. No case is hard for God. Our Lord delights in surprising us with the marvelous trophies of his grace. As we follow this faith group through this 11th chapter, we come to Hebrews 11.31. And the Bible says, By faith, heart, by faith the heart of Rahab perished not with them that believed not. When she received the spies with peace. Okay? And uh, as we read this verse of scripture, we have this horrible word, harlot, associated with this lady. And this woman did, did the, the wrong thing with her life and with her body. And all of us who are of some age are thinking that there's hardly anything more debasing that could be done by a woman. Yet God calls our attention to her. Because she wants us to look at her life and look at her Lord. She demonstrated something that all of us need in our lives. And that is faith. Our Lord delights in surprising us with the marvelous trophies of his grace. In 2 Peter, if you keep your finger right here and go a few pages to the right. Two, maybe three books, 2 Peter. Keep your finger here, we'll come back. Look at 2 Peter 3 9. 2 Peter 3 9, the Bible says, The Lord is not slack. Did I say 2 Peter? Let's see. Let's see here. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. If some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. This verse right here tells us that God is long suffering. And the word long suffering means to suffer long. It means to God is able to uh, to withstand uh, all the criticism that the world puts on him, everything negative that they say about him, uh, how people put him down and uh, blame everything on him that's happening in the world. He's blamed God for it. But the Lord, he, he's long-suffering. He lets that go. He lets it go. And the reason that he lets it go is because he's not willing that any should perish. He's given every person the, uh, the, the opportunity to be saved. Okay, that's why he is long-suffering. And a lot of times people think that because uh, they're involved in sin and because uh, nothing happens, that they're okay because nothing happened. But that's just God's long-suffering. The reason nothing is happening is because God is trying to help you to be saved before uh, he brings the consequences of your sin upon you. And so here... 
he is able to save to the uttermost. Your sin or any sin, the world's sin, can all be washed away by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That's what the Bible says in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. That's the people in the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so we also see in the book of Romans, if you keep your finger in Hebrews, you go to Romans now, a few books to the left, Romans 5.20. And Romans 5.20 Notice what the Bible says about sin right here. Romans 5.20, the Bible says, Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. See, your sin, your sin will never be greater than God's grace. His grace will always be higher than your sin. It will be able to cover your sin. That is why God is merciful. You know, we, we, we have here uh, the title of a harlot. And it's a horrible title. But, but there's a lot of other titles in the Bible. There's liar. There's thief. There's murder. There's disobedience. Uh, there are many types of sin. Sin abounds. There's all kinds of sin that people are doing. But the grace of God is greater than all of those sins. He is able to be merciful uh, to every person, regardless of whatever sin they're involved in. This woman lived in a city of judgments. She lived in a city of judgments. The scene takes us to Jericho, a city under the judgment of God. Rahab lived in that city. What would come of her? What would become of her? Our world is under the judgment of God and everyone needs to know of the Savior. Just like that city in the Old Testament was under the judgment of God because it was the first city and it was in the way of, of conquering the promised land where God was going to place his people in the promised land and that city was the first obstacle that they faced. And just like that city was under the judgment of God, the entire world right now is under the judgment of God. Right. You see all the things that are happening all over the world, and what you're seeing is, 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 is not that God is letting it happen. Those, you're seeing the symptoms. You're seeing the results uh, of sin. That's what sin. You're only seeing the symptoms of sin. The root problem that every person has in the world is sin. Because when, when Adam and Eve disobeyed God, they allowed sin to come in. And then death came right behind it. So that everyone that is born after them was born with sin. And so that's why people do the things they do. They do it because we have a sinful nature. And we can't help the sinful nature. It controls us. We can't control it. We don't, we're, we're not strong enough to control the sinful nature. It just controls us. And we give ourselves to the sin because that's all we know how to do. But when we meet the Lord Jesus Christ and he comes to live inside of us, then he inside of us is able to control our sinful nature. See, the woman lived under the judgment of God. And, and uh, if you look at Exodus chapter 15, Exodus chapter 15, second book of the Bible, Exodus chapter 15. And look at verse 14. Exodus 15 and verse number 14. This is God's promise to, to his children, the Israelites. Okay? This is after they left, after God uh, brought them out of Egypt. After 400 years of slavery in Egypt, God delivered them and he was going to bring them into the promised land. And he told them, as soon as they left Egypt, he told them this right here. Look what he told them. He says, the people shall hear and be afraid. Sorrow shall take hold on the inhabitants of, the, of Palestina. 
Then the dukes of Edom shall be amazed. The mighty men of Moab, trembling, shall take hold upon them. All the inhabitants of Canaan shall melt away. Fear and dread shall fall upon them by the greatness of thine arm. They shall be as still as a stone. Till thy people pass over, O Lord, till the people pass over which thou hast purchased. So God was already telling them, when you get into the promised land, those people that live in the promised land, when they hear of you, they're going to be afraid. And that's exactly what happened. God said this would happen because the victories that he gave Israel over all the people around uh, the promised land, he would give his people victory in Canaan, in the promised land. And that would make those people afraid in Canaan. Look at Joshua chapter 2. Joshua chapter 2. Deuteronomy Joshua the sixth book of the Bible Joshua chapter 2 and verse number 11 I mean excuse me number 1 Joshua 2 1 your Bible says and Joshua the son of Nun sent out, out of Shittim two men to spy secretly saying go view the land even Jericho and they went and came into a harlot's house named Rahab and lodged there. And it was told the king of Jericho saying, Behold, there came men in hither tonight of the children of Israel to search out the country. And the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee, which are entered into thine house, for they be come to search out all the country. And the woman took the two men and hid them and said thus, There came unto me, there came men unto me, but wist not whence they were. And it came to pass about the time of the shutting of the gate, when it was dark, that the men went out. Whither the men went, I would not. Pursue after them quickly, for you shall overtake them. For she had brought them up to the roof of her house, of the house, and hid them with the stalks of flax, which she had laid in order upon the roof. And the men pursued after them the way of Jordan unto the forts. And as soon as they, they which pursued after them were gone out, they shut the gate. And before they were laid down, she came up unto them upon the roof. And she said unto the men, I know that the Lord had given you the land, okay? And that your terror is falling upon us. And that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt and what ye did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side of Jordan, Sihon and Og, whom ye utterly destroyed. And as soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in the earth beneath. Okay, notice here a couple of things here. Okay, uh, not only is she living in sin, okay, but she's adding more sin. Okay, and she's adding more sin by lying to the, to the guards that came to look for the man. She told them, no, they went out. I don't know where they went. Uh, go, go, go find them and you'll catch them. But she hit him on top of a roof. And so, two things here that, that really stand out is that uh, she went up, up to the roof to the men that were hiding and she said to them, in verse number nine, it says, I know. You see that? She was definite. She was certain of what she was saying and she said, I know. And here, you notice all the the Lord, the letters are all capitalized. Thus, the name Jehovah. So she was saying, I know that Jehovah had given you the land and that your terror has fallen upon us. Just like he said in Exodus, that they would be afraid. It came to pass. And then in verse number 10, she says, For we have heard how the Jehovah dried up the water of the Red Sea. Now wait a minute. 
How long ago was that? 40 years ago. That was 40 years ago that that happened. And they already knew about it. Why? Because the word travels, okay? People see the wonderful works of God and they talk to each other and they pass it from mouth to mouth, from person to person. And so they knew about the Red Sea. Look at verse 10 again. It says, For we have heard how Jehovah dried up the waters of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt and what you did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side of Jordan, Sihon and Og, ye utterly destroyed. And as soon as we heard these things, our heart did melt. Neither did, did there remain any more courage in any because of you. Okay? And look what she says right here. This is a declaration. Okay? She's not just talking here. This, she's making a declaration. She's making a personal declaration. And what she's doing is she is changing sides. She is changing sides from living a life of sin all her life to now changing sides and going to God's side. You see that? When she declares this, she says in verse number 11 at the last part, she says, for, the, for Jehovah, your God, he is God. Jehovah, he is God. And heaven above and then earth beneath. Okay? By saying that, she pretty much put away all the idols that she had been following, okay? Which were, they had idols for everything. They had idols for, uh, for the rain, for the sun, for the crops, for everything. But when she made that declaration then, she said, those idols mean absolutely nothing. They're powerless. The God, Jehovah, he is the God above. And he is the God beneath. So she made a declaration and she changed sides right there. Okay? She changed sides right there to God's side. No longer to live in sin, but to follow God. That's what she was doing right there. So Joshua sent spies into Jericho and they discovered that the people were indeed living in fear. The harlot Rahab testified, the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in the earth beneath. Her heart trembled with fear as she thought about the only true and living God. She knew her city was under judgment. She knew what God had done for the Israelites. Certainly Rahab was a great sinner, but she heard about a great God. She learned that God's great grace is greater than all our sin. She realized that her life wasn't working with idol worshiping. And she followed the true God, Jehovah. But, but, and then we see that testament right there. And she changed sides. She made up her mind. She, 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 she was not afraid of the king. She was not afraid of the guards. She, she, she followed. She started following God from that moment forward. Because she hid the two children of God in her house. That was an act of faith. In other words, she was demonstrating that she had now trusted God. That was a very dangerous thing to do. Okay? What if the man that came to search for those two men, what if they came and they said, step aside, we're going to search your house? What if they had gone through the whole house? They would have found those two men. Okay? So she was not afraid of that. She made her, she made her stand. I'm going to stand with God. And I'm going to hide these men because th these are the people of God. Mm -hmm. And their God is the true God above and beneath. So I'm going to stand with God. And not only did she prove that she had now switched sides and was following God, and, but her, her life, the way she started to live from that moment forward, also demonstrates her faith because she she wasn't just thinking about herself. She started thinking about her family. Okay, what if what if I make a deal with these men and they come and, and rescue me? But what about my dad? What about my mom? What about my brothers and sisters? They're, they live over there on the other side of the city. 
And how are they going to escape the judgment of God? And so she was concerned about her family for what God could do for her and her family. Forty years later, the people still remember what God had done in the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. She feared God. Proverbs 19 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. She showed wisdom right there by fearing God. There are many people who have heard about God. They, they, they heard about what God has done, but they don't have the evidence in their lives. People say, yeah, I know God, yeah. Hey, do you know God? Yeah, I know God, I'm good, I'm good. But, but their life doesn't demonstrate anything about faith, and they don't live for God. They don't go to church. They don't read their Bibles. They just sin, sin, sin only. Every day is sin. And that kind of life is set for destruction. But this woman right here, she had trusted the Lord right there in that moment when she said, I'm done with sin. Uh, I'm, I'm done with living a life that I've been living. I'm going to follow this God because this God is the true God. Okay, she saw the works of God that he opened the Red Sea and she probably would have thought, man, that's a powerful work. Those little idol, idols that I follow, they can't do anything like that. You know, but this God is a true God. So the way of salvation, this story has often been referred to as the story of the harlot woman and the scarlet thread. It is the scarlet thread they deserve our greatest attention. Look at Joshua chapter 2. Joshua chapter 2. And look at verse number 12. Joshua chapter 2, verse number 12. The Bible says, Now therefore I pray you, she's talking to the man, and she hid. Now therefore I pray you, swear unto me by the Lord, by Jehovah, since I have showed you kindness, that you would also show kindness unto my father's house and give me a true token and that you will save alive my father and my mother and my brethren and my sisters in all that they have and deliver our lives from death. You know, all it takes is one person. One person. I came from a dysfunctional family. Alcohol has taken a few of my brothers with them, okay? I, I was always gone myself with alcohol. So alcohol has really, really struck our family hard. And if it wasn't alcohol, it was drugs. And if it wasn't that, it was something else. Spent a lot of time in jail. My brother spent a lot of time in jail. We had a name, we had a name. Serrano was not a good name to have. When I lived in Vegas, uh, the police commissioner uh, told me uh, when I was arrested one time, uh, I was a, a young private, a, a PFC, I was a PFC. And the uh, police officers beat me up when they arrested me. I mean, they laid me down. I had the cuffs on uh, my back and they put me face down on the, on the ground and pushed my head into the ground, grinding my face into the ground. And then they flipped me over and sat on top of me. And I was, all I was saying was, officer, officer, what have I done? What have I done? And he, bah, bah, shut up. When I talk to you, you don't, be quiet. And so they, they left me all, all purpled up. So when my brother went to get me the next day at the jail, um, he, had, he knew some people there and uh, they got me to see the commissioner. And I went in there, all propelled up, and he said, you know, I can ruin your career right now. Mm -hmm. And I said, yes, sir. And he said, I don't want to see you in Las Vegas again. Yes, sir. So I left Las Vegas. But, I mean, I was headed in the same direction as, and this is the life of sin. You know, sin has nothing good for you. But, you know, what I'm saying to you is, I came from a dysfunctional family, and there was no Christians in my family. There was only Catholics also following uh, idols, idol worshiping, that's what they do, okay? And so, all it takes is one person. You know, my, uh, my, uh, my older brother was saved 
And uh, then another sister was saved. And then uh, Marie led me to the Lord after making her suffer for 14 years. And from that moment forward, together, uh, we started to follow God. And we put God first in our lives. And we, we put our the Bible first in, uh, in raising our children. We started every day with the Bible. And that made a big difference in our life. And what I'm trying to say to you is this. The only thing is one person. You can say, well, I'm in, I'm in this family and nobody cares about God. and uh, It's just me. What can I do? No, you can do a lot. If you follow, if only one person in that family follows God, you will be able to help the rest of your family. Because look at, look at Rahab. She was a prostitute. What do people think about prostitutes? Not very much. But look, when she put her faith in God and started following God, she was able to influence her mom, her dad, her brothers and sisters. Because there was a change in her life. They were able to see that something was different about her and that she was following the true God. And they say, wow, what if she... Okay, let, let me give you a, a, another uh, illustration uh, from Sodom and Gomorrah. When, when, when um, Lot was living in Sodom and Gomorrah, okay, and God was going to destroy the city because of their sin, the angels came and they asked Lot, do you have any uh, more relatives in here? And he said, yeah, we got sons-in-laws and daughters. And he went to talk to them and they laughed at him. They laughed a lot. And, and the Bible says that he's a righteous man, that he was vexed. But they laughed at him. What I'm trying to tell you is he had no influence over his own family because of the life that he was living. And so all it takes is one person, okay? And to influence the rest of your family. When the Lord saved me, I was able to leave my brother Martin right here in the backyard to the Lord. He's in heaven now, but I was able to lead him to the Lord. And so you can, you can stop the cycle, the cycle of, of, of death. Because sin, the Bible says that when, when sin is conceived, it brings forth death. Every sin. So we live our lives in a cycle, okay? Uh, my cycle in Vegas was this. Uh, go to work, get off, get drunk, do some drugs, go to sleep, go to, wake up, go to work. That was my cycle every day. And you have to stop that cycle of sin. And you also have to stop the cycle in your family. If everybody in your family is doing the same thing, all right, they're all involved in the same sin, and, and one dies, another one dies, and there's another one dead over here, and then you have to stop and think, wait a minute, how can we stop this cycle of death? How can we do it? Well, all it takes is one person. One person to follow the true God and say, I'm going to follow God. And let them see your life, that you're following God, and you will be able to influence them for God. You will be able to influence your, your little nephews and your nieces and your children. They will start following you if you start following God. But all it takes is one person to stop that vicious cycle of death. Somebody's got to do it. Somebody's got to say, that's it, I'm going to follow God. I'm going to get in church, and I'm going to start following God. Rahab made the decision. She was not afraid of the king or the guards. She said, your God is the true God. In heaven above and in the earth beneath. And I'm going to follow him. I'm not, I'm not going to be afraid. And by making that decision, she was able to influence her, par her parents. And they all came to her house. And look at the, 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 what the Bible tells us right here. In Joshua chapter 2 and verse number 12. She tells the, the, the men that she hid on the roof. Verse 12. Now therefore I pray you swear unto me by the Lord. Since I have showed you kindness. That you will also show kindness unto my father's house. And give me a true token. And that you will save alive my father and my mother. And my brethren and my sisters. And all of that, all that they have. And deliver our lives from death. And the men answer her, Our life for yours, 
if you utter not this, our business. And it shall be, when the Lord had given us the land, that we will deal kindly and truly with thee. Then she let them down by a cord through the window, for her house was up upon the town wall, and she dwelt upon the wall. And she said unto them, Get you to the mountain, and lest the pursuers meet you, and hide yourselves there three days, until the pursuers be returned. And afterward may ye go your way. And the men said unto her, We will be blameless of this thine oath, which thou hast made us swear. Behold, when we come into the land, thou shalt bind this line of scarlet thread in the window, which thou didst let us down by, and thou shalt bring thy father and thy mother and thy brethren and all thy father's household on home unto thee. And it shall be that whosoever shall go out of the doors of thy house into the street, his blood shall be upon his head. And we will be guiltless, and whosoever shall be with thee in the house, his blood shall be on our head, if any hand be upon him. And so she, he, they told her, uh, take this red thread and put it on the window. So when the soldiers come in, they're going to be told that before the battle starts, when you see that window with the red thread, do not attack that family in that house. They are protected. And so she put the thread on the window. And that thread on the window is a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a picture of the blood of Jesus. Okay? Because we are saved by the blood of Jesus. It is the blood that cleanses our sin. The blood of Jesus, the blood that he shed on the cross to pay for our sins, that blood washes away our sin. And you see, it's also a picture kind of like, like when they left Egypt. They also took blood and they put it on the top of the door and on the sides. Top and sides. What does that look like? Top, sides. It's a cross. You see that? And so this is a picture right here of the Lord Jesus Christ also. There, before they left Egypt, you have to be inside the house and when the destroyer was going to come, if you didn't have the blood on the door, then the destroyer would come and kill the firstborn. I wouldn't know how many people said, I'm not going to put the blood. I, you know what? I'm going to put my baptism certificate. Yeah, I'll put that up there. Oh, no, you know what? I'm just going to put my bank account up there. Like whatever else you put up there, if it wasn't the blood, the destroyer will come and destroy it. But when he saw the blood, the Bible says he passed over the house. He didn't kill anybody. Okay? So they had to be in the house to be saved. Here, her family had to be in the house to be saved. She went and got them, and they came into the house, and they said, you tell your family, if they go out of the street and they get killed, that's not our fault. They need to be inside. It's also a picture of the ark. When the ark and the flood, the people had to be inside the ark. Because all those that were outside drowned. So they had to be inside the ark. It's also a picture of Jesus. Okay? The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Okay? So you have to be in Christ. You have to have trusted Christ. You have to have repented of your sins and asked the Lord to save you. Okay? That's how you avoid destruction. Because the sins will lead you to death. All sin, regardless. You pick a sin. Pick any sin in your mind. Any sin in your mind. And you follow where it ends. It ends in death. Smoking. Cancer, death. Drinking, death. Drugs, death. All sins lead to death. That's why we need to be forgiven of our sins because our sins are going to lead us to death. And the only one that can forgive us of our sins is the Lord Jesus Christ. When we come to him and say, Lord, I'm a sinner, please forgive me of my sins. I want you to save me, Lord. When you call upon him by faith, he will save you. Romans 10, 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, 
no, excuse me. For therefore, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay? That's how a person gets saved. So here, they put the scarlet thread on the window. So when the army came in, they wouldn't attack those people inside the house. And the spies kept that promise. Look at Joshua chapter 6. Joshua chapter 6. They're getting ready to attack, and then they attack. Joshua chapter 6, and look at the verse number 22. Joshua 6, 22, the Bible says, <coughs> But Joshua said unto the two men that had spied out the country, Go into the harlot's house. Notice again, she is still called what? She is still called a harlot. Go into the harlot's house and bring up thence the woman and all that she had as ye swore unto her. And the young men that were spies went in and brought up Rahab and her father and her mother and her, her brethren and all that she had. And they brought out all her kindreds and they left them without the camp of Israel. Okay? So notice she's out of the She's out of, out of the city of judgment. She's out of the city of judgment. But look, she's still, is she, is she in the camp? In verse number 23? No, she's without. She's outside the camp. You see that? She's out of the city of judgment, but she's still outside of the camp. Okay? Verse 24. And they burned the city with fire, and all that was therein only the silver and the gold, the vessels of brass, of iron, they put into the treasury of the house of the Lord. And Joshua, look at this. <laughs> Did you ever notice this? Look at this. And Joshua, what? Saved Rahab. Joshua saved Rahab. What is the name Joshua? In the New Testament, what is the name Joshua? Jesus. <laughs> Look at it. So you can read it like this. In Jesus saved Rahab. Literally. Isn't that amazing? In Joshua saved Rahab, the harlot life, and her father's household, and all that she had, and she dwelt. Now look, and she dwelt where? Now she's in. You see that? She was in the city of judgment. Then she was outside of the camp. Now where is she in now? She is in Israel. You see that? She is in Israel now, even unto this day. Because she hid the messengers which Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. Okay? So the spies made the promise and kept the promise. And uh, notice in verse 25, she dwelled in Israel. She was first placed outside of the camp, but now she is in the camp. She's in God's family now. She's in the family of God. Rahab was adopted and brought into God's family. What got her in? What got her in? There's a token here given to us. It is the scarlet thread hanging from a window upon the wall. The scarlet thread speaks of the scarlet blood of Jesus Christ. The lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Rahab was saved brought to God and spared. Her deeds demonstrated her faith in the true and living God. The Bible calls her the harlot Rahab. But let us not forget what the word of God says in 1 John. Look at 1 John with me. Uh, go to the last book of the Bible, Revelation, and go backwards, and you'll find 1 John. 1 John 1. First John 1, look at verse number 7. The Bible says in 1 John 1, 7, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. 
Look at verse number 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You see that? When we confess our sins, when we tell the Lord that we are sinners and that we repent of our sins, he is able to forgive us when we confess those sins. The witness of our faith. The Bible says by faith, the harlot Rahab perished not. Okay? She and her family were the only people spared from that city. Just like in the, in the ark before the flood. The only people spared was Noah, his three sons, and his three daughters. Okay? Another picture. Okay? Another picture of salvation. The ark. And then also here, only her family was spared. They were the only ones that were spared from the city. Who should be spared in the judgment of this world? Who's going to be spared in the judgment of this world? Only those who have placed their faith in Jesus Christ will be spared. Okay? Look at the, look at the verse again, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him, you must believe in Jesus that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Only those that believe on the Lord Jesus Christ will be spared when the judgment day comes. We should be given a witness of that faith. We should be giving a witness of that faith. Those who know Christ should be given a witness of that faith. Abraham, Abraham testified and gave witness of his faith by obeying God and going to sacrifice his son. He had the knife and he was ready to strike. He was going to go through with it. And the Lord said, no, don't harm the lad. Now I know. Now I know that you obey me. Okay? So he demonstrated his faith by obeying God. Okay? And in and, and the book of James, look at the book of James with me. Uh, we were in the book of Hebrews. One book to the right would be James. Hebrews and then James. James also give, gives us a testimony of Rahab. The book of James. James chapter number 2. The Bible says in James chapter 2 and verse number 21. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? The answer is yes. Seest thou how faith brought with his works and by works was faith made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. You see then how that by works a man is justified, not by faith only, likewise also was not Rahab the heart of justified by works? What were her works? When she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. That's how she showed that she had faith. That was the proof of her faith. She was not afraid of the king, not afraid of the guards. She was more afraid of the true God, the living God, who is the true God in heaven above and in the earth beneath. She was not saved by her works, but she certainly proved her faith by her works. She gave witness to her faith by what she did. Okay, the Bible says in, in Ephesians 2, uh, 2, 8 and 9, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, that any man should boast. That's talking about doing stuff to try to get favor from God. That's called a work. The person is not saved, but they're trying to do something to make themselves feel good 
You know, they'll, they'll go out and feed the homeless and they'll do acts of kindness like that. And, and that sort of uh, uh, calms their conscience, but they're not saved, okay? But when a person is saved, they will go out and do works and things like that. But the reason they do it is to show that they are saints. And so by doing those things, they confirm that they truly are saved. They're giving witness of their faith. We demonstrate our faith to others by the way we live. Okay? By the way we live. So, go to the book of Matthew, chapter 1. Matthew, chapter 1. So we meet this woman, and her title is Harlot, the Harlot Rahab. And that title follows her throughout her life. But when she turned her life to God and began to follow God by faith, God not only took her into his family, forgave her of her sins, okay? And then he exalted her faith. So that it is written in several books of the Bible. A harlot, no less. So what happens when a person is a sinful person and he turns to Christ? Well, Christ forgives the person's sin. He cleanses him up. Okay? He makes him into a new creation. And all the sins are forgiven. And he begins life anew. And everything that all the baggage that the person had before... Guess what? God takes it away. Look what he did with her. In Matthew chapter 1, look at verse number 5. This is the genealogy, okay, of the Lord Jesus. Look at verse 1. The book of the generations of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Okay, then we go all the way to verse number 5, and it says, And Solomon begat Boaz of who? Uh-oh, wait a minute. What's missing there? The title is missing. You see what God did? Give her a new life. And put her in the genealogy of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what God can do with one person or with many persons when they turn their lives to Christ. I hope that you would uh, think about this. And remember, all it takes is one person. All it takes is one person. And guess what? You don't have to do it alone. You think you're alone, but when you begin to give your life to God and you and you and you you you, you give your life to Christ, okay, He is with you. Because He's going to come and dwell inside of you. And you're never alone. Never. Even though sometimes you'll feel alone, He is with you every step of the way, even through trials. God will make a way for you. Okay? God will make a way for you. So, let's go ahead and pray. Let's bow our heads. And I'll pray. Father God, thank you for the testimony of Rahab, Lord. What a wonderful testimony, Lord, of faith. How you took a woman, Lord, who was in a very despicable time of, of sin, Lord. And Lord, you took her and you 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 cleaned her up, Lord God, and you you blessed her with life. You blessed her with her whole family, Lord. Nobody was lost. And then, Father God, you, you took her into your family to be part of the family of God. Be one of your children. And then, Lord, you exalted her, Lord God, by speaking about her testimony of faith in, in several books, Lord. The book of Hebrews, and the book of James, and the book of Matthew, and the book of Joshua. And uh, what a wonderful testimony, Lord God, of what you can do with a person who surrenders to you, Lord. Father God, I pray, Heavenly Father, please, for all that are going to watch this video later on, Lord God, that they would, that they would understand, Lord, that nothing is impossible to you, Lord. Nothing. All the person has to do is just, just step by faith. Just say, in their hearts, I'm going to follow God. 
I'm going to follow God. Okay? So with our, with our heads still bowed and eyes closed, let me ask you a question. Are you following God with your whole heart? Okay? Are you following God with your whole heart? And then if you're not following God with your whole heart, uh, this would be a good time to ask the Lord to forgive you. Right there where you're sitting, just talk to him and through your mind, just say, Lord, forgive me, Lord. I'm a very sinful person. Lord, I, I don't want to do these things anymore. I want to follow you, the only true God. Lord, will you forgive me? Will you cleanse me like you cleanse Rahab, Lord. Would you give me a new life, new direction, new purpose? Okay? And if you have never trusted Christ, you can trust Christ right now. Right there where you're sitting. Okay? You can pray and ask God to forgive you of your sins. In your own words, just say, Lord, I'm, I'm a sinner. Please forgive me of my sins, Lord. I've done a lot of sins. Lord, I, I don't want to do them anymore. I repent of them. Lord, would you cleanse me? Would you forgive me? And Lord, would you save me, Lord? Would you make me a new person? Lord, I want to trust in you. Would you do that for me, Lord? The Bible says that whosoever calls upon the Lord Jesus Christ, whoever calls upon him for salvation, he will save him. Okay? So with our eyes to close, head bowed, how many would say, while nobody's looking, would you slip up your hand quietly and and would you testify and say, I prayed that prayer. And I made it my own. Thank you. Thank you. Father God, you know everything. And you can see uh, through our hearts, Father God. We thank you. We love you. We continue to pray for the focuses, for recovery. And thank you, Lord God, for the miracle, the miracle that you did in heart. Daniel's by bringing him back. Oh, Lord, what a blessing of God that is. Thank you, God. Lord, I pray for Kelly and Cherie. Lord, they would go back to their homes recharged, re-energized, ready to follow you, and to be testimonies to their family, Lord God. They would get in church, begin to live for you, Lord God. I pray that you bless the families all the children, grandchildren, nephews and nieces, brothers and sisters, Lord, that they would see their testimony and come to Jesus. What a wonderful thing that would be, Lord. Father, we love you and thank you. We ask these things in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God's people said? Amen. Amen. Let's sing thank you, Lord, tonight. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation so rich and free. The Lord bless you. You are dismissed.